So the fourth closet graphic novel has finally come out and today I'm going to be reading through it and noting any interesting details I find. I really like this book and I so very much like the art, especially the cover art. And while I did find a bunch of interesting details, there were a lot of inconsistencies in this book from things we already know from the original book. Like when the Amazon box came to my door and I opened it up to near the end of the book just to see how certain things look, I saw there was just so much wrong with it lore wise especially like if you were just a casual reader and you had no idea about the lore and implications of the fourth closet you would probably not even notice but the book is inconsistent please don't take this as me disliking the book as i most certainly do not obviously all of the silver eyes trilogy graphic novels have inconsistencies from the originals such as how in the silver eyes jessica wrote on the door that carlton smells like feet but in the original but in the graphic novel it was charlie but none of the other graphic novels have as many cons inconsistencies as this one, and I'll point those inconsistencies out as I go along. But anyway, including those inconsistencies, I found 29 interesting details in this book, so let's just get straight into it. Number 1. After John gets fired from his job for not being focused, a purple car almost hits him. Again, probably because he wasn't focused on where he was walking. He's been thinking a lot about Charlie even though she's back, but he because he doesn't think that's the real Charlie, which he is correct. But John's first thought when he got hit by when he almost got hit by that purple car was William Afton. This is because in the games, through Midnight Motorist Take Cake from the from FNAF 2 and the Curse of Dreadbear DLC from FNAF VR. Ooh, I got the orange sky. I'm getting all the Easter eggs today, man. What? Purple lights. Purple man. William does indeed drive a purple car, but in this continuity, John has never seen William driving a purple car. So why does he think of Afton when he sees this purple car? I mean, obviously it wasn't Afton, it was Jessica, but it's still weird that his first thought was Afton. Number 2. After his pep talk with Clay goes sideways, John leaves the house, saying he shouldn't have come in the first place. When he leaves the house, he looks angry and purple. This could be a hint at his anger. Obviously John isn't Afton, but I find it to be interesting that he looks purple in this panel. Number 3. When John runs into Charlie on his way out, he starts wondering if it really is Charlie, wondering what kind of nightmare she must have had from that night if it really was. Then we see a panel of her completely bl black with eyes like Springtrap. A couple pages later, John thinks to himself that those weren't her eyes. This is because Charlie is, is a possessed animatronic. She's the fourth Charlie bot and is possessed by Elizabeth. That's why she has the springtrap looking eyes. Number 4. When John is an hour early to see Charlie, he walks around and starts thinking of maybe going to see a movie after eating. When he walks around, he notices Circus Baby's Pizza. There's multiple images of clowns on the side of the building. It seems that the main fun times aren't the only clowns at Circus Baby's. An interesting thing here is that Circus Babies in this book has a yellow door. In Dance With Me, it was stated to have a red door, meaning this is a different location. Number 5. On page 28, the guy that asks John if he's here with children wears a yellow shirt with the word Baby Circus on it. In the original fourth closet, it says Circus Babies Pizza World on it instead. Number 6. Earlier in the book, when John asked Charlie what he told her before she died, he actually tells her he told her he loved her. That's a weird sentence. He tells her he told her he loved her. Yeah, okay. But later, she is still trying to figure out what he told her. I think this was an error, and the I love you part was meant to be in a box rather than a speech bubble as to represent John's thoughts, but yeah, it's there. Number 7. On page 48 and 49, William says to Elizabeth that, quote, they can only serve a greater purpose. They'll become something more like you once did. He could be referencing Elizabeth possessing Baby, but it's also possible, since the conversation is more so about Remnant, that Circus Baby also had Remnant injected into her. This is something I already believed, and I just think there's a good chance of it being true. Number 8. When I read the original Fourth Closet for the first time, I, I made a video just like this one, and I believe I also mentioned this there, but I'll mention it again. On page 56, a woman comes to the hospital to see Chief Burke because her son, Jacob, is missing. She says the other officers told her to call her ex-husband, but she says she knew he didn't take him because he wouldn't know what to do with him. This is the same thing Henry told Clay about Charlie and her mother. Is this a coincidence? I don't know, it's just weird that they said the same thing. Number 9. 
In my Twisted Ones graphic novel video, I mentioned how there was a picture of Charlie that looked like Ella that Charlie didn't remember. I wondered why Charlie didn't remember this. I had thought the memories from each Charlie carried over to the next, and in this book it's revealed that I was correct. Circus Baby, the adult Charlie, Elizabeth, says she has memories that aren't hers and that she doesn't care for them. So my question is still, why does Charlie not remember that picture of her? Number 10. In the games, Elizabeth has green eyes and Circus Baby has blue eyes. When Elizabeth dies and possesses Baby, Baby's eyes turn green. But in this book, Elizabeth has blue eyes and Circus Baby has green eyes. But Baby's eyes don't turn blue afterwards. They're still green in the present day of the book, 1997. Was this an error, an inconsistency, or a difference the games and the books have from each other? Number 11. On page 90, we see that Elizabeth has blonde hair, not orange hair. Is this trying to tell us her hair in the games is blonde and not orange? Or is this another difference from the games? I lean more towards Elizabeth being blonde, but let me know what you guys think in the comments. Number 12. Not only that, but we can also see the, that Elizabeth has ice cream PJs. This is a reference to how in the games, Elizabeth was lured in by Circus Baby using ice cream. Number 99. On page... Oh, wait, no. <laughs> Number 13. On page 99, we can see that William Atten uses a FNAF 1 endoskeleton as the animatronic with the illusion disc to make it look like Springtrap is dancing. This begs the question of how he got that endoskeleton. Surely he couldn't have made it in his current condition, so did Circus Baby get it for him? Number 14. On page 100, Jessica asks Afton about the fake blood in the broken down Freddy's location, and Afton tells her that he spilled plenty of real blood and he had no need to fake it. He said that fake blood was someone else's. It's completely glossed over and never mentioned again, and it took me a few seconds to realize, but that fake blood was from Charlie. It's also mentioned later in the book by Aunt Jen. Number 15. During his discussion with Jessica, William Afton wore a purple robe. Nice touch on the fact that he's purple guy in the games, obviously. Number 16. Ah yes, now it is time for one of the biggest inconsistencies in this book. This thing. Now you may be wondering what this is. This is the Remnant Amalgamation. No, seriously. In the original Fourth Closet novel, the amalgamation was described as a metal heap of scraps, but here, the literal bodies of the animatronics are all part of this thing, and for some reason, it's an animatronic. I have to be honest, it looks cool, but this is not Remnant. Remnant, at least the Remnant in the fun times, is the melted endoskeletons of the original FNAF 1 gang, all five of them. The shells of the animatronics, however, are left behind. But for some reason here, the animatronics are just stuck together, and Golden Freddy for some reason was abandoned. Golden Freddy isn't even a part of this thing, even though Michael Brooks is, still. This thing makes no sense. This thing is not Remnant. This thing is simply wrong. Number 17. Circus Baby was made by both Afton and Henry. When Henry made it, he knew there was something wrong with it. Is it possible that in the game universe, Henry and William built Circus Baby together, but there was actually something wrong with it? If this is true, it's possible that Elizabeth's death was actually the first death in the series, besides Mrs. Afton, of course. And it could have been an accident. Maybe Circus Baby wasn't actually originally meant to kill people. It was just a malfunction. It's also heavily implied that William killed Charlotte out of jealousy and rage. It's possible that Elizabeth's death caused Afton to blame Henry, as well as envy him for having the perfect family William doesn't. This could be the reason he kills Charlotte. This is a theory I've had for a while now, but I think this is an appropriate time to actually discuss it. I'll talk about it a lot more in my FNAF Victims video. Due to Security Breach and the Ultimate Guide, I've had to, de I've had to delay that video, but it will hopefully be out sometime soon. Number 18. Something I've always wondered is whether Ella was possessed by Henry's agony or Charlotte's spirit. On page 127, John read Charlie the note Henry left for Aunt Jen, and in the letter he says that he poured his agony into Charlie. But later, it's talked about that Henry was so sure Ella was sh his Charlotte. So was it his agony forming her into this Charlotte, or was it the original Charlotte's spirit? I feel like it's both. Charlotte possessed Ella and Henry's agony is also a part of it, but let me know what you guys think in the comments. Number 19. In the Fazbear Frights universe, Eleanor, a version of Circus Baby wearing a normal red dress just like Charlie in this book, is in control of Ella. She is behind 1.35am. This could be a reference as, as to how in the novel trilogy universe, they are both technically Charlie. Number 20. The kids locked in Circus Babies thought at first that Mangle was a broken up toy. This could be a reference to Circus Baby being in Elizabeth's room. And number 21, following up on that, 
That could also be the reason Mangle is in this book at all, a reference to Elizabeth's bedroom in a book primarily about Elizabeth. Number 22. On page 135, we see our first glimpse of Mangle in this book. However, Mangle in this universe is actually the sister location Funtime Foxy of this universe. You can tell the difference between Mangle in this book and Mangle in the games by the pink on the palm of Mangle's hand in this shot, whereas in the games, her hand is completely white. Number 23. As it turns out, there are actually four Ella dolls, one inside each and every one of the Charlies, literally just in their stomachs. I don't remember if this was stated in the book, but this is really interesting to me. It explains that there are actually multiple Ella dolls, which explains how it was mass produced in the Phasma Frys universe. Obviously, Phasma Frys and the novel trilogy are two different universes, but it's something to think about how there's multiple Ellas. Number 24. In Security Breach, after dealing with Chica in the sewer, we can find a room with a dining table and a bunch of staff bots. These staff bots form the Afton family. Oh Jesus, what the fuck? family there's circus baby there's Mike I don't know they're wearing like a baseball cap but they're also wearing a striped shirt like a balloon boy obviously this isn't balloon boy nobody in the family That's... in the family becomes balloon boy unless you believe BB victim which is a shit theory um who's that is that William maybe yeah William um that's the wife is that... And the headless one is Bite Victim. Is that some... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bite Victim, yeah. For the head headless one. I was wondering. I was like, why is there no head on this sh The headless one is the Bite Victim, for obvious reasons. The Ballora-looking one is Mrs. Afton. The Circus Baby one is Elizabeth, obviously. And the Pizza Worker is obviously Michael. But some people have pointed out the Magician-looking one not really being too reminiscent of William Afton. However, in this book, William refers to remnant as pixie dust as a metaphor and obviously pixie dust has to do with magic and this solidifies the connection between william and the magician staff bot number 25 following up on what we talked about earlier circus baby tells charlie that henry got a piece of himself into charlie this shows that some of henry's agony certainly is inside charlie bot even if charlotte spirit is inside it which is still debatable number 26 now we've made it to multiple more inconsistencies when Carlton goes into the Remnant world, Michael introduces him to Susie, Cassidy, and Gabriel. The problem here is that Cassidy has dirty blonde-ish hair. She's supposed to have long black hair. Not only that, but Gabriel wasn't actually named in the original fourth closet. The bite victim appeared unnamed, but we knew he had to be either Jeremy or Gabriel. But looking at Gabriel here, he's not wearing a striped shirt. But not only that, the, bl the black and white striped shirt kid is nowhere to be seen. And neither is Fritz. Well, until the next panel where we get our answer. It turns out, the striped shirt kid in the graphic novel universe is Fritz. But they're not wearing a black and white striped shirt. They're wearing a red and white striped shirt. This is one of the most inconsistent parts of this book. The black and white striped shirt kid is incredibly theory inspiring. And I think all of us were hoping to get more clearance on whether or not this kid was actually the bite victim from the book but all we got was inconsistency. It's also inconsistent with the fact that Fritz is supposed to be a ginger with freckles, but here he's just a blonde kid. Number 27. I noticed it in the original book, but this book makes it even more abundantly clear that Susie is most in control of Mangle, which could be evidence that Susie is Mangle's dog. Wait. Which could be evidence that Susie's dog is Mangle. Number 28. For some reason, Remnant Bonnie changes colors on page 185. He looks like Chocolate Bonnie and Easter Bonnie had a baby, which was then rubbed with sandpaper. Number 29. For the final detail in this video, I want to bring up something that was also inconsistent in, in the original Fourth Closet. Charlotte was born in 1980 and died in 1983. However, Charlie in the Silver Eyes was 17, and the Silver Eyes took place in 1995. This is not how age works. Charlie should be 15 in the, in the Silver Eyes, so this is confusing. But again, it's probably just an inconsistency. But anyways guys, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Impulse out and out, peace, and yeah, see you guys.